Okay, everybody. I'm at the end point of my journey. I'm returning back to Oakland with, i say some positive and negative feelings. Positive feeling is we can put this behind us and, and, and proceed forward to um, be there with him and uh, have him in a place where he can receive food, clothes, TV from where he was at for the last 15 months. He had nothing because he was in a juvenile system. They don't they don't do commissary. They don't. But yeah, like I was saying, he was in a juvenile detention center where he couldn't receive any type of, you know, um, um, hygiene or clothes or um, food or um, anything like that. For 15 months, he's been dealing with that. Now he's going to a place where he have a little more leg room to stretch around and to, um, you know, get the things that he need. And that will be severely given to him in a big way. You know, it's not like a homeboy or something that you don't hold down. I ain't never been that tight. I always wrote my people. I always did what I can, money-wise. And, um, you know, just sticking to what loyalty as a friend and as a person that you build a bond with. And this trip um, enlightened me on so many damn levels, man. And let me know um, humanity and and the lie that we was fed by this music and how it influences everything in your life and it influenced the generations to come after they are dumbing down everything because they want you dumb open a book read get some type of self-knowledge know that anything can happen in a matter of seconds as you can see i'm at the airport now I'm at the airport about to board Alaska and um, coming to the end of my journey. You know, it was an emotional roller coaster. You know, my son, so much heart, so much integrity, so many smarts, and so many dumb decisions at the same time, if you can understand that. You know, we never know what life throws at us, man. We never know. But we gotta just deal with it, roll with the punches and keep moving. You know, he took it like, um, he took it like a grown, thorough man took or take something like that. He didn't pass out. He didn't start crying and screaming and begging the, the judge. He said he admit to his what he done and he's willing, he's willing to lay in the bed and, and do what he had to do. I know people that's grown, that broke down to their knees and folded. This is not that type of character, man. And I'm not trying to make it seem like he's this big bad dude, because he's not, he's a child. But he's a child that made a mistake and can redeem himself. Don't ever think you can't redeem yourself, because you can. Sorry, I need some chapstick, man. It's cold as fuck out here in Washington, man. If y'all know about Seattle, man, you know it's fucking freezing, bro, right now. But, um, yeah, so this is coming to the end point of my journey. I will be documenting me leaving and getting to the house and really letting this settle in about what just happened. Because um, some parts feel real and some parts don't. So, um, y'all just sit back. I'm glad you made it this far. And I want your feedback. I will, I will love your feedback. And just know that this can happen to avoid all signs. Stay in your kid's life. Don't be your kid's friend. If they get mad at you, oh well. At least they won't be dealing with the shit that's dealing with now. I made so many mistakes, so many, and I just pray that I can be better than I ever been. 
to all the single parents, single parent moms, and single parent dads. Don't let the time consume you to where you're not paying attention to your kids. Because they can go down the wrong path so easily. Y'all continue to ride. And we're going to make it happen. I'm out. Hey everybody. Last mark of my journey. On the way home. Tired. Stressed out. Put to the limit. I'm about to ready to take off. Got on my t-shirt. Made for my son. Getting ready to go back to Oakland. Need to shave. It's all bad. But it got handled. And we know what we're dealing with. So I'm going to have this out to you guys. So that you can share it. And save somebody that really needs it. So they won't be in this same situation. I know, I, I know that I'm saying that over and over, but I'm trying to get it in your head so that you know how real life is. You take this stuff for a game and it's not a game. People losing their lives. So I pray for y'all. See, I'm on the plane right now. Ready to go. So I'll see y'all when I touch down. Hey everybody, just got back, just got off the plane, on my way to the house, it was a lot of stuff I recorded, it was sad and good, and a lesson to be learned, I hope it helps somebody. So they don't have to go to that type of situation and deal with that type of stress and pain. Cause it was bad. But on my way, I'm about to get in and leave. So they'll be coming soon. They'll be coming soon. I hope you guys take something from it. Hey everybody, just made it home, just got here, just got situated, I'm about to shave, get my waves back, shit's fucked up, it was a bad little situation, you know, hope we can make something positive out of this, fuck up, majorly fuck up, on all parties. See, this is, the ha this is what happens when you raised by a single mom parent. And there's no male figure in a house to guide you and to put you on a path of su success. So what do you do? You go out into the streets and you hang with the thugs and the hoodlums and the drug dealers because you think that's being a man. So by the time you realize what the fuck is going on and that this is a fucked up situation, you're already fucking deep in it. So basically you got all the cards thrown in. Ain't no coming back out of it. And that's where our mind was, hypnosing us with the music, and the life, and the shining cars, and the money. And we thinking that's supposed to be men, and we looking down at the people that's working nine to fives. When in actuality, they are the hardest working, hardest stand up dudes around. So every part of me, and the other cousins and family members dropped the fucking ball, man. Dropped the fucking ball, man. And this is what happens when you drop the fucking ball. This is the hardest thing to do, man, is to sit here and look yourself in the fucking mirror. Knowing you fucked up. Knowing what you cost someone. Knowing the stress that you put on someone. If this don't let y'all know who I am, I don't know what the fuck will. Because this is raw. None of that bullshit. Or none of that fake ass shit. This is my life. Outside this fucking YouTube. 
and I hope y'all can appreciate it. You can send bad or good comments because I really don't give a fuck. I really don't. But the real people know. They know what's. They know the point that's trying to be made here. The clowns is gonna always be the clowns until some real shit hit the clowns. And then that's oh, when they get a reality check. If it ain't too late. So thank you guys for this walk, for this journey, for this ride. It was a hell of a ride. And I just wish that it helps you. That it puts you in a better situation, in a better life. Hey, everybody. It's me. This is the next day of the court for my son. You know, it hit real hard today, man. Real hard. Thinking about what he going through, the process, you know, and that feeling when you first go in, not knowing what's gonna happen, not knowing the rules, not knowing where to sit, not knowing what not to touch, you know, it's just, it's a lot of politics, man. It's a lot of politics. And I'm just hoping that he can adapt sooner than later. You know, I know that's sad to say and hard to say, but at this point it is what it is. You know, I was trying not to show no emotion through the video and trying to steer away for that because you know, when you do shit like that, people think that you're trying to get sympathy and it's not sympathy. I can give a fuck about some sympathy. It's about pain. It's about pain. And knowing that my actions and my past caused this to snowball into this big ass avalanche of shit. And people don't understand and don't know the pain of us of being in the streets or being a hood nigga or whatever you want to fucking call it whatever you want to fucking call it man it's all bullshit it's all bullshit when shit comes down to this is it worth it is it worth it to watch your loved ones get shot you get shot your house get kicked in. You getting beat up by the police. Running from the police. And I'm watching your son go to prison or, or worse die because of choices you made in your fucking life. You set the tone for this. I take full fucking responsibility. I stand on it. I could have done better. I could have did more. Took me so long to snap out of that fucking hypnosis. By the time I snapped out, I didn't realize my son was already in. And that's something I got to deal with. I'm gonna be there for him as much as I can. Like I should have been from the first place. And like I said, there's no sympathy. I don't want no sympathy. I wanna save somebody from going through something like this and dealing with this. This pain and hurt and feeling like you, you caused this. a hard one man the hardest I ever been through and I've been through a lot
just pray y'all get yourself together, man. And focus on the reality of life. Your kids, your family, the people that love you. Not the homies. The niggas that ain't gonna write you and gonna fuck your bitch when you in jail. Not them. The real ones. The ones that care enough to tell you you doing wrong. To tell you you fucking up. Them ones. The ones you shine off. I hope this wakes somebody to fuck up, man. I just pray it wakes somebody up, man. I'll be blessed.